Hi guys, thanks for coming back to another video. I appreciate y'all coming back. God bless you. May peace be in your house as it is with mine. Over the last several postings of videos, I have been trying to provide some information and show the pathway that the Lord was leading me into in regards to the tree of life and moving forward along our pathway um, to the garden and the kingdom which is within us. Um, we have been speaking about all different types of things as he has been showing us and I've been providing some graphics um, as to what my understanding was over the last several videos. Um, but I do want to share some information uh, and continue to move forward in regards to the things that he is continuing to show me now. Over the last several uh, months, the Lord has really, really been pointing us to the way. He has um, made sure that we understood that it was His way, um, and it is called the way. And as I've gone through to do some research, I am um, understanding more and more, especially when I delved back into some messages back from 2014, that even then, without my full understanding, he was speaking of the way. As I've done even more research, I have um, been given the understanding and uh, to know that the Nazarenes, um, the sect, the S-E-C-T that they had made mention as the followers of Jesus in, uh, in that time, um, they called them the Nazarenes, um, and they followed a lot of the Ebionite and Essene and Nazarene day-to-day um, -day, uh, culture, um, basically. And so when you go in and you start to dig into some of that information in regards to um, who were the Nazarenes and what about the Essenes and what about the Ebionites and how does this all merge to be? Um, we tend to get a little bit better picture as to who Jesus um, truly was. Um, it is very interesting. I submitted and shared with, uh, with you all, um, maybe not in the last video, but it could have been in the one prior to that, in regards to um, a book that I ordered. It was the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Um, and I've had some feedback in regards to some people reading the book. Um, a lot of you have said um, that there's a, that there is a lot of spiritual uh, fruit and meat in this. A particular book and I agree with you 100 um, percent some of you have um, tentatively been a little bit more fearful in regards to it um, because um, it seems to contradict some of the things that were provided in the Bible um, so f for those that are um, feeling a little uneasy about it in regards to that I would just ask that you seek the Lord on it and follow the living word. Uh, I would follow the living word. Okay. And in that, I mean, seek and have an intimate relationship with the Lord Yeshua so that he can provide guidance for you through prayer every day. Uh, and that is, that is what I mean. OK, um, we talked about that this was coming to be, that there was going to be a time where it's going to be him teaching us one on one. Um, and and truly, he has been doing that with me for many, many years now. Um, he opened my ear. He allowed me to hear him. He taught me how to hear him. And from that point forward, um, we have had conversations and I have um, I have actually documented probably, oh, I don't know, probably 90 percent of what he has provided and said to me. Um, not 100 percent. I've not documented 100 um, percent, but um, but a high 90 percent, I would imagine, has been documented. 
What I'm going to be talking to you all about today um, is just a continuation in regards to what he has made mention to me in regards to diet. Um, I'm coming back again to discuss this again because, guys, it is very, very important. Um, this video and probably the next one, we're going to go in and we're going to continue to discuss it. Um, because of things that he is showing me every day on a daily basis that is continuing to confirm what I am telling you, okay? No meat, no fleshly meat, no fish, no fowl, no, none of that, none of it, um, and no strong drink. Um, the other night I woke at 2.30, this was the night of, um, 731 so they end the very last day of July um, I awoke at 2.30 in the morning and I was given understanding and wisdom um, he has already spoken to me in terms of the diet and what I need to be very careful about that it is a vegetarian diet it is a plant based diet okay um, but now he woke me up in the in the in the middle of the night basically to to impress upon me something else okay um so for some time now i have been thinking upon that diet that the disciples of jesus might have eaten or what may have been available to them and when because now remember they were wilderness dwellers right just like father abraham um and they um a lot of times when they were sent out they were sent out with nothing right and so um so sc scripture speaks on this when he was sending them out to share the way as the gospel of jesus okay they went out to share the way as the gospel of Jesus. Now, the uh, gospel of the Nazarenes, which you can find in, uh, in, in the books, is also the same as the gospel of the Holy Twelve, which was the book that I had um, shared with you all previously. So, in the night at 2.30 in the morning, I awoke and I was given the thought in regard to gluttony. Okay, so... He's taken me and told me about the diet, no meat, no alcohol. Um, so it's a, a, a plant-based diet um, with fruit, okay? But it is also, um, he's now talking to me in terms of gluttony. He's talking to me in terms of sizes and amounts of things. And so when I awoke and had this impressed upon me, I had first, I asked the Lord to just forgive me of the gluttony that I was not even aware I had been partaking of. Because guys, really, in regards to the sizes and the amounts and the times of eating, specifically here in the United States, we can see that the gluttony has been hidden in the guise of supersizing it, super value meals or combos that we can buy because it's a better deal two for one or two for five or whatever not even including the fact that we eat three or more times a day so this past month or so i have really been focusing on the diet and removing meat and other things from it and then i realized that i can eat a huge amount less and still be satisfied so when I was laying in bed that night and I had these thoughts given that gluttony is being hidden right in front of us and many of us do not even see it and now I believe that the enemy has done this just like he has hidden and covered and made uh, made other things that we are told to be careful of in this life or in this world um, it's now painted as being a normal thing right so this goes right in line with another thought that was given to me several weeks ago on the theme of sex in everything in everything we see and everything we hear we know we can't even turn on the television to even have a commercial without it popping up 
in that. Music is everywhere. I listen. I have my eight-year-old grandson, and I hear some of the music that happens to be coming over the radio station that he might be listening to, and, and I'm amazed. I'm, I'm actually shocked, really. Um, it's in everything. And when we, when we, when I was delving into the Gospel of the Holy Twelve or the Gospel of the Nazarenes, as it's also called, um, I read and, and understood some um, information in there that it speaks of a righteous man will hold his seed. It speaks that a righteous man will hold his seed. And so when I when I read that and understood it, and then I thought about not only about the gluttony, but now about the sex and everything that we see. Um, and then when I saw what the gospel actually said, I thought to myself, well, now I understand why it's everywhere, because it is also something um, that is being said that if it's done one way, you can be you can be constituted as part of being a righteous act versus uh, versus not. And so it, it also, when I was reading in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, um, I read that that was actually one of the temptations that was put before Jesus as well in the wilderness after the 40 days of fasting, but somehow has been removed from our Bibles. It is not there. Um, so if you look today, sex is everywhere. It's in song, it's in TVs, it's in movies, it's on the computers. It's the kids are groomed with it in so in society at such a very young age now. It's it's ridiculous. Um, so what else is being shoved down our throat as a point of life, right? Just everyday life that is really what we are warned about in Scripture. Um, alcohol is one and I mean guys really if you think about it everything it's all right here and it's all right in our face and it's all being pushed down our throats basically if you think about it so I wanted to talk to you all in regards to um, what the Lord um, kind of led me to and what he was trying to tell me uh, in regards to, um, in regards to gluttony. So I had gotten up and just kind of pulled up some scriptures that were dealing with gluttony. Um, and as you can say, there are tons of them dealing with, um, with gluttony or, um, or sowing really toward the flesh. Um, but let's just read a few of them here. It says their end is destruction. Their God is their belly, and their glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. Philippians 3.19 Proverbs 23 says, Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. Um, put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Um, and it continues to talk about um, uh, eating and what you are focusing on and what is becoming your idol. But I thought this was really interesting in Proverbs because what does it speak of here? It speaks of alcohol and it speaks of meat. Uh, I thought that was truly interesting that that showed up uh, to begin with. So I also wanted to go over Galatians 5 and just um, go down here to where it's walking in the spirit. I have uh, King James and New King James here. Um, so if we start at verse 16, it says, um, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, 
selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. So now we talked about what that kingdom was. We talked about that in uh, in the last video and possibly the video prior to it. Um, so that's very, very interesting information and that is right there. So we want to be very, very careful um, about what it is talking about here. Um, we are told to love the Lord God with all of our heart and to love our neighbors as ourselves and to treat others as we would want to be treated and to help one another. We are taught to be in the world, but not of it. And truthfully, if we stand still, I mean, truly, if we just stand still and take our blinders off and really look at things, we can see it all right in front of us. You know what it's like? It's like we're in this thick, dark sludge, okay? We're in pitch darkness, but it is shown to us as light and life okay um when we look at uh, when we look at things that are that are going on in life as it is today um if we really see where we are we're standing in darkness we're standing in that outer darkness that the bible speaks about that's where we are but it's that's not the way it's being shown to us. It's being shown to us as being light and life. Meaning, if you, uh, if you have a lot of money and you have a nice house and you have a big, uh, I don't know, whatever big vehicle that you want and you have all of these different types of things that you, that money can buy, um, but truly you're still standing in darkness and you can't take them with you. Um, you know, if, if we have, um, tables, you know, we're, we're throwing a feast and we have all of this alcohol and we invite everybody over and we have all of the, we're grilling out and we're having, you know, all of these meats and all of these different things that we have here. But at the same time, we're told to be in the world, but not be of it. You know, do, am I, am I coming, am I making sense? The truth is, is we're in the outer darkness. That's what's around us, but that's not what's being shown to us. Okay. It's like that Matrix movie. Um, it's not what, it's not what our reality is not the true reality. It's not. So, we're in this thick, dark sludge, but it's shown to us as light and life. But there's no life in it. There's no life in it. And there's no light in it. The way what Jesus came and walked and taught us to follow, the way is the path of light given to us. It is life being given to us. Okay? It's like a flashlight. It's like a flashlight when in the night is so dark and foggy that you can barely see where your next step will be. That is where we are right now. We're in that darkness, that outer darkness that the Bible speaks of, where there's gnashing of teeth. Okay? It was then that the Lord reminded me of Isaiah 60. He showed me that we are in this darkness. And then he reminded me of Isaiah 60. Now, in 2014, he gave me several messages that speak about that darkness. Even before I had even read Isaiah 60 in the, in the Bible, okay, um, he spoke to me and gave me three different messages that I sought him on in regards to the darkness. Um, guys, that darkness is now. 
It is what we are in right now, and it is so thick upon us. Uh, let's take a look at Isaiah 60 right quick. Okay, so we're just pulling up Isaiah 60. I have both King James and New King James um, for us to read. Uh, but let's take a look. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That right there is our transformation, right there. Okay? Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. Then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of the camels cover your land, etc., etc., etc. Okay, very interesting information. Back in 2014, the Lord gave me three messages uh, regarding the darkness. I sought him on it. I got one message one day. I sought him the next morning on it. And then I sought him the next evening on it. And I got, um, I got a whole lot more detail in regards to what he was trying to tell me. I want to share those with you. If you've been watching my video for some time, then you are already familiar with these, but it's been some time since I have brought them to you. Um, so it's good that we're going to go ahead and go over them one more time. So as you can see, um, this was a message from June the 26th, 2014. Um, this is when the Lord asked me to read over Isaiah 60 um, after I received this message. Um, and it's very, very interesting here. So let's just go ahead and read it. It says, Wisdom comes from understanding. Wisdom is the key. My words are wisdom. I tell you these things so you can share and understand what is about to occur. I lead you through the path unto safety. Watch and see, for it is good to be under the hand of God. Okay, now I need to just say to you, he just told me the pathway is within. Okay, he just told me the other day um, when I was speaking to him in prayer, he said the pathway is within. Okay, so I lead you through the path unto safety. Uh, very interesting information here. Let's continue. Carefully instruct those around you regarding future events. Darkness and brightness of light will be bestowed. You will see light. Others may not and will be disturbed, frightened. Darkness will become heaviness within those who choose it. When these things occur, look up for your redemption draws nigh. Look up, I say. Rise up. Raise your head for you are not condemned. I have chosen you to lead others. I have chosen you to prepare the way. The words are the way. I am, uh, he says, my words are the way. I am the way. Will not my will be done on earth as it is in heaven? All things are under my submission. I control all, not the will of man. My ways are higher and full of grace. My ways will lead you to safety and not destruction. When you transform into beings of light and I flow through you, you will be a picture of me for all to see. Keep me near. Keep my words always on your lips, in your heart, in your mind, for they will fill you to overflowing for others to feast on. Keep my waters flowing within you, through you, for others to drink. It will be needed. Show them who I am through your love, words, actions, embracing all who come to me.
And that was the end of the message. So the next day, I continued to press and ask him in regards to this darkness. And this is what he said. He said, darkness comes so people can, cho can choose. I will call out to all in that darkness. Now, remember, he has just said, we are in that darkness now. We are in the, the what the Bible calls the outer darkness now. Okay? It is not being shown to us as the darkness. It's being shown to us as just being living a life here on this earth. But it's not. Okay? Darkness comes so people can choose, and I will call out to all in that darkness. If you once knew me, you can return to me. If you never knew me, I will show you who I am. When darkness comes, choices will be made, choosing either the light or remaining in that darkness. Things will be shown to you, truths that you have not known, allowing all the freedom to choose. My angels are making their way to you as we speak to help all during that time. I have called out to those so many times, and many have not heeded my words or warnings. Can I be a God that will lie? My words will come to pass. My Father in heaven is awaiting your response patiently. He desires none to perish. His final warning will be one of mercy. Take heed, for my words are true. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. My ways are the way to life. Do not be deceived. Now, guys, you know, when I read that the other night at 2-something in the morning, I, I could not believe uh, my eyes have been opened now to what he is truly saying in these messages. My ways are the way to life. Do not be deceived. Guys, he walked as a vegetarian. He, 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 he practiced the, the being a vegetarian. There was no meat there. There was no strong drink there. Guys, listen, hear me when I'm saying this. Um, it's very important. And now, and now the Lord is even imposing on, uh, gluttony, but even more just to be, just to be eating in moderation. Okay. To be eating in moderation. Um, all right. Let's continue. So draw near to me and I will draw near to you. My ways are the way to life. Do not be deceived. Awaken from your slumber. Open your eyes and see the choice before you heavenly light and love will come to those who choose it my, will come to those who choose it my power among upon man and no other shining bright for all to see my love will be shown through my people offering you a light for your path i am in that light follow me and all will be well with you follow him See, he came, he walked his path. He had to walk the path. He was the first begotten son. He was the first one. He provided the way. That is the pathway we are to walk. We are to do the things that he did. I am in that light, he says. Follow me and all will be well with you. And when these things occur, do not look to the left or the right, but look up. I will be there waiting for you. That was the end of the message. Now notice here, I received even that message at 2.30 in the morning. I prayed to God to give me clarity on the darkness. Was it physical or spiritual or both? I had other questions. I received another word from the Lord later that morning. Look what time this was. So it was the same. This was the middle of the night. This is when I got up that morning. I received another message. When I told you darkness would come, darkness will be upon the people. Darkness will be upon the people. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah 60. Behold, for darkness shall cover the earth and dark and gross darkness the people. Okay. Deep darkness the people. So this is what he's saying. A heavy darkness one that looms and is thick and hard to get away from. It envelops and takes down all it comes into contact with. 
My words regarding this given to you are true. They are put forth for your benefit and instruction for others. When speaking of these things with others, describe the consequences of their choices. Many will not know or understand the meaning. The darkness will overtake man's mind and heart, placing them in Satan's domain. Okay. Um, guys, I have some other information that I just actually read over yesterday. Um, when I read it, I, 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 it confirms everything that the Lord is saying right here. And I, I will definitely share that with you. My children will see me on the horizon, a light shining forth, reaching into their hearts, filling them with joy. When my children see me, they will be overjoyed as will I. The choice is completely up to them, whether they choose light or darkness. All will not see the light, but those I have chosen will be transformed into beings of light. They have work to do for the kingdom and will need my strength, my protection, and my help. I rely on them to prepare themselves for my arrival. Let me say that again. I rely on them to prepare themselves for my arrival. When these things occur, my little ones will be ready and fortified. My angels take flight to assist those in battle. Victory is mine. Again, I say, victory is mine. Choose this day who you will serve, for you cannot serve two masters, or I will spew you out of my mouth. I am the Most High God. I come to redeem my children, my faithful ones, my pure in heart, those who seek me and look for my coming. Now, guys, this is stuff that was given to me back in 2014. And when I received it, it meant something to me then. And we have read over these three messages several times over the last couple of years because um, he has brought it back to my memory and it was tying into a particular part of our study as we've been um, moving along over these last couple of years. But now... When I'm looking at it, um, because now I'm, I'm more aware of what the way is and what it was that Jesus was, um, was all about, what he was trying to make sure everyone else knew and understood. Um, now when I look at these three messages, now it's just like, oh my goodness, here it is. Um, very interesting, very interesting in information. Um, this right here I would like to speak on too. They have work to do for the kingdom and will need my strength, my protection and my help. And I, I just want to say that I, I had a conversation recently with the Lord. Actually, it was the beginning of uh, this past week um, because he has shown me a whole lot more of uh, some things that I have been praying on and asking for, and he has been giving it to me and showing me um, certain things. And I went into conversation with him in regards to um, uh, to some of the things that he was showing me. And, and we'll go over that as well, because that's going to be very important information for you guys to know as well. But um, but I said to him, you know, well, Lord is, you know, um, I think my question in regards was, you know, he said I had more, he said I had more work to do, um, but I know that my work is going to take off once I have received the logos. Once I have received that spirit within me um, to strengthen me and to um, um, to enlighten me, so to speak. I mean, I will receive him within me, right? So um, that's where that's where the power of the Most High God is going to come from when we go forth and we heal and we do things in the power of the Most High. I mean, it's not our power. Um, that is the power that is given to us as we walk forth in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, um, and teach others about the way. Um, so guys, I, I wanted to bring that to you and, um, and just say to you guys, 
he is continuing, continuing um, to talk about this, about the diet, um, and he's continuing now to expand a little bit more on it in regards to eating in great moderation. Um, eating and, and drinking uh, in great moderation. Um, and so I thought it was very interesting. That is kind of where he had led my thoughts to be because my thoughts had been in the last several weeks upon the disciples and the apostles and um, what their diet would have consisted of and how does, you know, how was all of that working, etc., etc. So, um, so guys, you know, we're, we're taught to be in the world and not of it. Um, so we're in this thick darkness. We're in this blackness. It is just like the, the Matrix movie where the guy said, choose your pill because you're either going to walk in this life and continue seeing everything as it is and think that there's, you know, and think that you're doing fine, but it's not the truth. The truth is not being shown. Uh, the truth is, you know, right everything, all the temptations and everything is just right in front of you and, and we've been programmed to the point where we just accept it as everyday life anymore. Um, what was normal in morality and the way and clothing and the way that people talked and dressed and different things a hundred years ago is so different than it is today. Um, you know, but had a hundred years ago, if those people were alive today to see what we're doing here, they would be appalled. Um, they would be. Um, you know, but it's because we have just been programmed and, um, you know, desensitized to the point that, you know, it's just we're so used to it now that we don't even recognize what's in front of us anymore. All of this temptation and all of the, the thoughts that we have coming at us and all of these different things. And, um, you know, guys, it's it's all right there. If we just open our eyes and see. Um, you know, it's it's very interesting. So I was given a thought um, that the Lord gave me, and he gave me one particular word. And the word uh, in the middle of the night was bina, B-I-N-A-H. And when I looked up the word bina, um, I understood its meaning of understanding. It is a word that is uh, connected to the tree of life. And when I when I saw this, I knew it was an answer to prayer because I had asked the Lord to show me things and give me a better understanding of things. And so um, one night in the middle of the night, I was given the word bana. And um, when I went and looked it up, I understood that it meant it's it has a meaning of understanding. So this night I was reminded of it. This night that I'm talking of about being awake in the darkness and everything that he's saying. I was reminded of it and I knew then that this night he was indeed giving me a better understanding of things. He has opened my eyes of understanding and he is removing the scales or the veil from my sight and has shown me what is right in front of me, veiled and hidden for all. He then reminded me, okay, of the scripture, and I, and I paraphrase, in all your ways and getting, get understanding. Let me go ahead and pull up that particular scripture. Okay, so I have uh, Proverbs 4 pulled up, King James, New King James, um, and it says here, Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. And give attention to no understanding, for I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. Now, when he's talking about my law here, I'm finding it very, very interesting because the more that I'm digging into the way, it is called the way of the law. That's what it's called. When they speak of the way, um, they speak of the way of the law. So when I saw this, for it says, I give you good doctrine, do not forsake my law, I understood exactly what it was saying. When I was my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words, 
Give my com keep my commands and live. Okay? Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her, and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Okay, guys. Um, you can go through and read uh, and read the rest of these. Um, but oh, let's just finish it here. O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. Now, what's really interesting here is, more that I've dug into uh, into the acts of the Nazarenes, I'm finding out that many that uphold the way of the law have their life extended. Um, I'll be able to show you some of that as well, or I'll be able to provide the documents for you and you guys can read it yourself. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom and I have led thee in right paths. Guys, this is, oh, I'm telling you, I am, I am beside myself because every time now, as I have dug in more to the way of the law, finding out what it is saying, and then going through and reading the Acts also too, not only the Gospel of the Nazarene, but the Acts of the Nazarene, um, I'm finding out more and more and more that it's tying right in to um, a lot of these um, particular scriptures. This was Proverbs 4. Four, if you would like to go ahead and to continue reading that over. So now when we're also looking at wisdom, Proverbs 8 is one that was um, really standing out to me as well. I'm not going to go through and read the whole thing, but I definitely want to get down to this part. Um, the Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought, for, brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters could not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and the delight was with the sons of men. Now, um, I want to continue going forth. But I want to talk to you about this, okay? So we already know that we, the Lord knew us before we even were in our mother's womb. We know that we are old. We know that we um, were, were with him in the very, very beginning. We have come full circle many, many times. When we looked at uh, some of the information, uh, if you've gotten to, gotten that far in the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, or it's also called the Gospel of the Nazarene, it goes in and it discusses more about the immortality of the soul. Okay, it talks about coming back here in this earth and learning things in this world. Okay, um, many times. Now, I made mention of this um, many years ago. The first thing that the Lord ever told me was I was at the cross, did I remember? Um, I, that threw me for a complete loop. I had no idea what he was trying to tell me. He then went in to discuss with me about Miriam. He then went in to discuss with me now, most recently, about another person, which again is also answered prayer. I ask him for things and he gives it to me and he shows it to me. Um, so guys, continue asking him for things. He is willing to give it to you, to show it to you. 
um, with anything that I am providing for you, I am continuing to say, please, please, Request the Lord to give you some type of confirmation in regards to this, okay? So we've been here several times, some of us more than others. Um, you know, there are times when you can hear some people that say, oh, he's an old soul, you know, especially here in the South. Um, that is something that some people will say. And really what that means is that that particular person or child or whoever it is that they're speaking of um, is a very calm and wise person for their age. Oh, he's an old soul or she um, she has an old soul. And really what that means is um, basically that they are more mature beyond their years or wiser than those of their age. And um, and so I'm I'm finding it very interesting, especially when we're talking about the immortality of the soul, um, specifically in Scripture, where Jesus says, and if you choose to believe it, that John the Baptizer was Elijah. Okay, um, so it's very very interesting information that this is providing. Um, and for us to, to start looking into this. But I thought that that was interesting. I wanted to bring that forth. So let's continue. So now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors, for whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. Um, in the beginning of the Gospel of the Nazarene or the Book of the Holy Twelve, it speaks of um, it speaks of two there are two ways there is a way of life and there is a way of death there is a way of life and there is a way of death so guys we are in that thick darkness that Isaiah 60 speaks of that thick gross darkness that's upon the people hidden from sight and shown to us as love as a uh, light and life Things of this world are so heavy upon us. They are everywhere and they are smothering us. Heavy upon our bodies and our mind. But we have been given, we have been given a light. Okay? We have been given a path to follow. To be in the world to learn, but not of the world and its temptations. We are to find our way by the light given and get to the maturity level needed in this life focus not on the things of this world i hear that's what i was hearing in my mind focus upon me he is saying i will get you home we see these situations are being played out to place us in situations where temptations of things seem normal to go for, right? And we're so used to have them now. We're, we're used to seeing them. We're used to having them where it's an everyday occurrence. It's just normal life for us now. But what I'm hearing God say is wake from your slumber, rise and shine and see the world for what it really is. Guys, we have a job to do. Okay. All of creation is waiting for the sons of God to manifest. Where are you in your mind, in your heart, and in your choice along the path? Let's get going now, guys. There's no time to waste. I want to thank you for coming back to another video. God bless you all. Stay under his wing. And until we speak again.